Hey Faith family, welcome back. Um, all right, so this is, I'm gonna share today with you one of my, I think I think it's, yeah, I would say one of my favorite Bible verses. And it's always stood out to me and I didn't, yeah, it was something I always longed for, but I feel like I've, I'm getting closer to that version of myself. So 2 Corinthians 5, 17 in the ESV says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. So I'm going to read the, the Amplified of the, same, of the same verse, just to kind of show you the, the contrast there. Uh, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior, he is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, so the previous moral and spiritual conditions, have passed away. Behold, new things have come, because spiritual awakening brings a new life. So I love that, that the depth of that explanation. Because, you know, in the first one I read is very, very brief. Um, and the Amplified, yeah, I'm not gonna go into that because you guys know how much I love that. Um, but yeah, just just the the last line, like, so behold, new things have come, and uh, which brings, it's a spiritual awakening, and that brings a new life. So I had an experience about three weeks ago now, I'd say maybe two and a half or so, I went to a conference um, in a city that, that I don't live in and um, I've been to conferences before but it and I didn't think that it would impact me in the way that it did because like I said I've gone to conferences I like to take notes when I am in conferences and so I have like I I had and I had to get rid of them like just books full of like notes and like you know different things conferences that I went to but I went into them and I always left the same like I never I was never changed as a result of what I had heard or seen or done or anything like that. So I wasn't expecting much. I went with a friend thinking this was more for her than me. She's a new believer and um, you're just, she's going through a hard time. So I'm like, yeah, we'll go together. And um, if God wants us to go, he'll make a way and we'll go there and stuff. So all that stuff worked out and it was great. And um, yeah, it was called Encounter God's Presence. And I, when I heard that, when I read that, I was like, how can you claim something like that? Like, who are you to say God's presence will be in that place? Like, he does what he wants. Like, he sits up on his throne, they, the Bible says, right? And so I'm like, he does what he pleases. Like, how can you say that he's going to be there? So I was kind of like, okay, kind of going into a little bit skeptical in the beginning anyways, right? And I'm like, well, what am I even getting myself into? I don't know, but like, it, it'll be okay. It'll, it'll be a good break, I think. So we get there and stuff like that and like I had no idea like the, the people who did the conference they were so intentional about setting everything up before we got there like I'm talking about prayer like I'm talking about just being so mindful about like that how impactful this weekend will be so that was like the first thing I think they poured in and they stayed you know they would come an hour before they would leave an hour after and this went from 9 a.m to 9 p.m on on one night and so for them to come before and after like that is true devotion and dedication right and like they just they really poured into this uh conference there was about you know six to eight people leading and they had some other people but anyways so uh yeah so i went there and just had this experience they just kind of like built up like each day was sort of like building up a little bit more until like they broke me basically at the very top and then or, and then i came crashing down or something i don't know what happened to me but yeah it was just it was a lot of stuff that I think that all conferences really should do it. They, you know, there's such an emphasis on bondage and just, you know, past things, past hurts and unforgiveness and, you know, how we can sort of as a, as a body of Christ, like move forward when we have these, uh, these past hurts and things like that. And so they put us in groups of threes and we just, we kind of, you know, we get into things and we discuss like, okay, this one topic, or, you know, we, we confess like our sins really to each other and, and not on each other but I mean we'd lay it there before Jesus and we'd be like you know we are this way we want to repent we no longer want, want to be that way and they would make declarations over the person who just shared their repent what they want to repent over and it's just the power in that like I literally every time they prayed for me I was like Phew. like I could feel like that I felt lighter like I I physically could feel like something was being lifted off of me and I actually did came home and I did this with my husband. I'm like, you have to experience this. Like, I, I know that the other girl said the same thing. Like, you have to experience it. So we went through it together uh, last weekend. And he was like, whoa, like totally. Like when I said those things, when you prayed over me, like I felt different. Like I, I felt different. Anyway, so I went to the chiropractor since she's like, whoa, like all your knots are gone. Like your normal things that we've been working on because we've been working on my shoulder for a long time. She's like, you feel like lighter. And I'm like, I feel lighter I told her you know I was like I feel different and so anyways yeah so 
I, I won't go too much into the weekend itself, but I just want to let you guys know that for me, I wrote uh, about three years ago, the biggest miracle that I could ever see God do in my life is to make me more Christ-like. Like that is what I wrote because I'm like, I am so far from like how Christ is and the contrast that I see, because it's easy to be whoever you want out there in the world, right? I, I can put on, I can be anybody, right? But to be Christ-like in my home, with my children, with my my parents or my family, like the people who know me the best, right? Like to be Christ-like with them 24 seven, to me felt impossible. Like I, I was like, that is the biggest miracle. I, I could believe God could raise the dead. I believe he could, you know, heal the lame and, and the blind, all those things. I believe I could see those things, but for him to make me like him, that is, will be the biggest miracle. And I wrote about it and I, I shared it with my husband once and whatever, and never thought anything of it. Right. And then going into this conference, they, they gave us like a 13 page, like read up before we go to kind of prepare our hearts. And I didn't really do it. Honestly, like I like read like seven, I kind of like skimmed and I was like, I kind of understand the basics of this. But the night before I, I felt like God woke me up and he was like, you know, so I was like, okay, I should like read some of the scripture that they had suggested the readings. And it was like the, uh, the one where it's like, you know, if you abide in me, right? I forget it off the top of my head, but you know, remain in me and I'll remain in you and that kind of stuff, right? Apart from me, you can do nothing. So they really told us like dissect that verse and like go through it and everything like that. So I did um, and I followed it and I just kind of like, I just kind of prayed like a little prayer, like just simply like, you know, I, I just want to surrender to you in a new way, God. Like I want to just, I want you to draw me closer to you. Like show me who you are, like reveal yourself to me, right? And I've prayed these kind of prayers before, like it's nothing new, but like he actually did it. Like every night that I was there, it was like another layer, another level. Like first it was like God showing me who he was. Then it was like God showing me like, you know, like Jesus, like his suffering, like, you know, not the Mel Gibson version, but like his actual suffering. Like I closed my eyes and I could see like a movie playing, like how it actually went down. And then, and then like I'm in worship, like deep. And I like the Holy Spirit like falls on me. Like, I'm, I did not know that was possible. If I saw it myself, I would think it was demonic or something was wrong with that person. Like I cannot describe like what I was acting. Like I was running around, like screaming at people, like, like we're free. Like, do you guys get that? Like, do you realize like the, the price that he's paid? And here we are, like, we can't even like clap our hands loud or like raise our arms up or whatever. And like, he paid the ultimate price. And here we are like, so worried about like, what are they going to think of me? Like, oh, if I put my hands up or if I jump, like what's somebody going to think about me? Like, who cares? In that moment, I was just like, I am free from you. I am free from me. I am free to be who God created me to be. Like for the first time in my entire life, like I had never felt like that before. Like I have never, I went around like yelling at everybody. Like I'm talking like grown men and women. Like here I am yelling at them to like jump, like jump. And they're like, I am jumping. I'm like jump higher, like go on. Like I just, I lost myself. And I, and I, and I was so embarrassed afterward. And like the pastor like came around and he's like, it's okay. Like, don't worry. If that was something that like was not from the Holy Spirit, like we would have stopped you. Like, because you know, we've seen some distractions come in and everything like that. And you were praising God, you're glorifying him the whole time. You weren't trying to take away from anyone's experience. And, and people were still worshiping, doing their own thing, even though you were running around screaming and yelling at everybody. And he felt like it was okay. I was like, okay, that makes me feel a little bit better, but I would still test the scriptures when I go home to make sure it wasn't something else on me because I just needed to know for myself. Like I've only gotten like that one other time and I thought I was like being possessed by something because I was yelling at my brother. I just lost it on him. Like I lost it on him. Like, and I realized now it was because he was being mean to my parents. Like he was like just putting them down and like they do everything for him kind of thing, I think. And like he was not respecting them and they deserve respect, right? And I just lost it on him. Like I was like yelling at him. Like my children were present and I was, I didn't care. I was just yelling at him. And so that's what scared me was because like, I, you know, that was a lot. That was, that's my association with that type of anger. But um, I think, at, you know, when I, look at the scriptures and everything like that. I, I know that I guess it was okay. It's just that I didn't know such emotions existed. Like I didn't know it was possible to like lose yourself like that, where it's like, you're kind of having like an experience where you like, you see yourself yelling at everyone and like, you see the scared look on their face and you want to stop. They're like deer in the headlight. And you're like, I just got to yell at you because you are sleeping right now. And so, yeah, it was a really crazy, crazy, but cool experience. But I, I see like a change in myself. Like I'm not saying I'm Jesus himself. I'm not saying I'm Christ. Like I'm saying that like 
I can see a transformation. I can see how it says like because a spiritual awakening has happened, which brings new life. Like I, my mom even is like, who are you? Like, I don't know who you are. Like my dad, who's not a believer, came over the other day and I was like, he was like, oh, I fell on the weekend and like a, a snowblower fell on me and my leg is really hurt. I'm like, oh, let me pray for you. Like, who, who says that? Like, I don't have the ability to do that. I know I don't, but I feel like the Holy Spirit is coursing through my veins. Like, I feel like I am super powered with this like superhuman powers, like which is from God. And I, I feel him coursing through me. Like, if I started telling you stories in the past week of things that I have done, like, I wouldn't believe me. Like I went to our non-believer Muslim friends in Calgary last weekend with my husband because I felt like God wanted me to share something with him, a word. I drove down there and we barely know these people and they're Muslim. Like, why am I going to a Muslim to tell them about Jesus? Like, I just, I felt like God put on this, like he gave me this like whole thing and I like wrote it all out and all this kind of stuff. And I just, I felt like he was speaking through me in that moment. And I just like went there and faith that if I never see them again, like I'll understand it's okay, but I need to do what God is laying on my heart. And like, he was just like, everything you have said is true. And he was like, kind of like, you know, I wasn't trying to like convert him. I just wanted to share like the truth of, you know, like how God sees him, how, what plans he has for him and all this kind of stuff, you know? And he was just like, whoa, like I want to know more, like, you know, kind of thing. So I was like, okay. So he drove away kind of like, okay, phew, that was scary. And just other things too, like, you know, just to my brother even, right? Like, you know, it's time, it's time for you, like the wayward son to come back, like come back to the father. Like he wants you back and he's got plans to prosper your life and not to hurt you or harm you and all those things. And yeah, just... Even later on today, I'm going to go and speak to somebody about something God has laid on my heart. And I don't like she's my chiropractor, like, but I don't know her. I don't know her life, but God knows her. Right. And and with every person I've done this with, with like the principal, my kids school, you know, my my family, whatever, whoever it is, they're like, whoa, like they're in tears. Like when I say stuff and I'm like, it's not me. Like, I don't I'm not this smart. Like I may be witty or whatever, clever at times or whatever, but I'm not. I don't have this knowledge. I don't have this intelligence. I'm not articulate in those ways, but like, but God is right. And I, I'm, I, I think it's because I came to that place of full surrender. He was like, okay, like, I'm going to use you. Like, I'm going to send you. And then when I do, you go. And I'm like, I'm going to go because like, for me, now I get up every morning. Like, how can I serve God? Not like, okay, I got my to-do list. I'm going to check off my prayers. I got to make lunch for my kids and do all this stuff. It's not even about that. anymore. it's not about me. It's not about anything. It's about like living for the king like it's for living for jesus and just like what do you want me to do because i realize like the debt that you paid for my for me for my salvation like the price that you paid is so great there's nothing i could ever do like i could live a million years and not feel like i i have you know not we don't we don't we know that our salvation is not for our works like he gave it as a gift right and i know that i'm not trying to do works I feel like I want to do this. Like when you love somebody, like you want to do things for them, right? Like I am in love and I, and it's like I said, it's coursing through my veins and I want like nothing more, but just to like, like just be obedient and, and just live my life according. Like it's like, a, if I die tomorrow, I'll know that I died serving God. Like I, that thought always scared me. Like when I hear like a noise outside, I'm like, oh my gosh, the trumpets, like Jesus is returning. And I have not done like what I should, you know, when Jesus says like, depart from me for you did not do my father's will. Like that, that, that thought like grips me. If you, I have fear about that, like that I'm not living my life the way he wants me to be. And so like now I'm all in, like I have pushed my chips in. I'm like, I don't care what anyone thinks of me. The world thinks of me at the end of my life. I'm going to stand before God. Like I believe that it'll be me and him and he'll, I want to hear like, well done. You know, that what he tells me, well done. Not like, what what have you done with what I have given you? You know, I have these children. I have this family, I have this home. I am, you know, around all these, like most of my families are Hindus. Like, I know that that's not my burden to carry. I know it's not me who's going to bring anyone to Christ. But when he says go, I will go. So, so yeah, this is me, I guess now. And uh, I'm still coming to terms with it. My family is too, like my husband, poor guy. Like, I feel sorry for him because every morning it's like, what now? <laughs> Just see that look on his face. And yeah. So, I mean, I know I have to like learn to rein it in sometimes or whatever. And just like anything, right? Like as I walk with him and as I learn to do this better and discern and, and you know, do whatever, like prophesy or whatever, um, I know that like I'll get better at it. So, yeah, I trust God and I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm free. I'm free and I'm me and I'm excited. So, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, 
I hope that you're encouraged by this and, uh, you know, the Bible verses and all those things. Like, you know, there's got to be scriptures that have stood out to you, right? And there's a reason for that. So I just encourage you, like, just draw closer to God, like surrender to him. You know, we have such a hard time with this word surrender because you think like you're slaves, but no, we're not slaves. Like we're servants. Like we, we want to serve the Lord, right? Like I don't mind being called. I'd rather be a servant than a slave. That's for sure. So, so anyways, um, yeah, God bless you. And, uh, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye.